Go! Pretending has always been the bread and butter of acting. Pretending to be someone you're not. Pretending to be some place you've never been. Pretending to have led a five-ton killing machine out of captivity. As digital effects get more and more advanced, the role of the actor or actress becomes more and more complicated. Instead of acting with another person, a puppet, or even an animatronic prop, actors are forced to act entirely in front of a green screen. However, the film world has still not come to terms on what the effect of the green screen will be in the future, or what this new acting environment does to actors and actresses. Ian McKellen, a British theatre actor turned movie star after his role as Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, infamously broke down on the set of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, saying, It was so distressing and off-putting and difficult that I thought, I don't want to make this film, this is what I have to do. It's not what I do for a living. I act with other people. I don't act alone. Now, I didn't make this video to condemn the green screen. Contrarily, I believe it is a tool that allows film to become more immersive, and yes, true to reality, than ever. However, implications for what the green screen means for the future of cinema, and particularly what this does to the role of the actor, has yet to be explored or recognized by the film industry. Acting is evolving, and the future is green. Daenerys Targaryen, played by Amelia Clark in the hit HBO series Game of Thrones, co-stars predominantly not with a person, but with a fully CGI dragon that is created digitally on a computer. You know, the harder the challenge, the more I relish it. But this? This really, you're like, can I just even maybe have like, you know, like a screen with like clouds or something? Like, I've never flown on a dragon. Clark's co-star, Macy Williams, shares a similar sentiment about the use of green screen, saying that problems arise, particularly when you're trying to work with someone else, as you're both imagining something totally different. Neither of you are imagining exactly what they're going to put there. This touches on one of the complexity of green screen filmmaking. How can you assure two actors looking at a giant colossus are seeing the same thing? You could show them artwork or a photograph, but the way the city interacts with the environment, its many moving parts, as long as the emotions read to an audience, does it even really matter? Williams continues. They're like, look out to the castle and you just think, well, how far away is it? Is it right here? And although you can ask all those questions, it never looks right. You watch it back and you think, I can tell I'm looking at a green screen. Even though for an audience member, it may not register. Break the windows! Windows? Break them yourself. Come on. However, green screen and digital effects aren't singularly used for backdrop, but now can allow actors to play the T-Rex, so to speak, using motion capture technology. Here's Liam Neeson on turning into a sort of tree monster in the 2016 film of Monster Calls. Monster Calls was, uh, you know, I knew it was motion capture, um, whereby they dress you in a very tight-fitting sort of onesie with ping-pong balls attached to your extremities and there are sensors that go into these computers and the magicians add digital makeup to your performance, to your body, um, and they transform me into a kind of a tree monster. So it was a very, very interesting process. This interview strikes me as particularly intriguing simply because Neeson seems as baffled by this technology as anyone, despite the fact that he just finished playing a motion capture role. There is a major disconnect between the actors and the technicians that apply this digital makeup. This is one reason, among many, that the Academy Awards have not given the Best Actor or Actress Award to a motion capture performance, something that Andy Serkis, one of the most prolific motion capture actors alive, finds as an incredible oversight. The whole controversy about people like me who are in the movie reviewing business all know that the performance you're giving in this and in Rise of Planet of the Apes are extraordinary. And yet the Academy doesn't recognize it as a performance because of the computer aspect of it and motion capture. Well, I think, I think things are changing in the sense it's really all about perception. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously there's, th th there is, there's the visual effects side of, of a character like this, mm -hmm. which, which is a separate thing, really. It, it should almost be viewed as um, a digital costume and makeup, and that is not to take anything away from the interpretation of, of, of the, or the extrapolation of the performance in the way that they put it together. Mm -hmm. 
But the actual authorship of the role in, 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 this, in this case and in, in other cases like Caesar and Rise of the Apes comes from the same place that, uh, you know, that, 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 that the authorship of a role in a live action part. It, you know, it, you can't make it better. You can't make, you can't engage the audience more on an emotional level by adding CG effects. According to Mr. Circus, there shouldn't be another Oscar category for digital performance capture. As he says, personally, I don't believe there should be another category because the essence of the performance is pure acting. However, this is a controversial statement. Richard Elrond, a four-time Oscar winner for Best Visual Effects, who has also won three Academy Scientific and Engineering Award, disagrees. Well, the Academy is studying this whole issue, he says. I know Andy Serkis thinks that he was the first one to use motion capture and all that, and he's a talented guy, but the thing is, Andy Serkis' performances are also tweaked by animators, and so rather than giving Andy Serkis the entire award, if he were to be nominated and voted in, you'd have to split the award with the animators. So it's a very difficult thing. There's always a serpendipity about performance. There are things not on the page of the script that happens within the performance of an actor. When you animate, everything is intellectual. Everything is being created. So this is the valley that animators have to cross. Now, now, keep, keep, keep your distance. I don't want any trouble. You understand? Just show me the way to get out of here, and I'll be on my way. We know, we know safe paths, Robinson. Safe paths in the dark. Shut up. I didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. As technology advances onward, it'll be interesting to consider what is even considered acting as actors begin to be de-aged, retouched, or reconfigured more in feature films until every actor is eff effectively playing until every actor is effectively playing a motion capture role. However, as always, technology moves fast and culture moves slow. As Hollywood moves more and more into dreamland, actors imagining entire situations within a green screen studio. It's important to understand how the green screen and digital motion tracking could change the entire profession of acting, as well as cinema, forever.